it's where you, I mean, it's been banded around the internet quite a bit, but if you shuffle the Olympics 2012 logo around, you can spell the word Zion. Indeed. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of stigma against the word, and, you know, for no reason whatsoever. But obviously Zion stands for the term New Jerusalem. Yeah. And uh, this got me, having seen the Ian Crane speech and everything, this got me doing my, essentially, you know, I had an urge to start my own research into this. I wanted to find out if what was saying could be proven kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, first thing that brought to my mind was the poem by William Blake. And uh, William Blake wrote a poem in the 18th century called Jerusalem. And uh, there's a paragraph, uh, the, the final final like few words in that poem says I will not cease from mental flight nor shall my sword sleep in my hand till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land <laughs> so basically William Blake was a known 18th century esotericist with connections to the Freemasons and uh, you know he, he was famous for such pieces of artwork as your eyes and the creator which yeah. is a big picture of like kind of you know the creator with a with a compass opened up like a pyramid just like, you know, Freemasonic symbology and stuff. Didn't he uh, reference the Newton in regards to that, that painting? Um, Have you heard about the, that? The, yeah, the, there is the Newton painting as well, and Newton is kind of on the, like, lurched over on the floor with his compass. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's, okay. that's a different painting of William Blake. It is, okay. Yeah. But, um, mm. but essentially in that poem, we'd got an acknowledgement from a guy connected with this esoteric research that they were intent on building Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. Mm. And so, you know... We're thinking, like, when we talk about the Olympics 2012, we're talking about something that's been planned for hundreds of years, and there's a lot of proof that I've dug up that can show that. Mm. Um, but basically, mo moving into the Olympic scene further, after this talk, and when I got back from this talk in uh, July last year, the first thing that happened was there was a, um, there was a video released by the Olympic Committee, and this, uh, this was a stadium design video. Welcome to the next stage in our journey to the Olympic and the Paralympic Games in London in 2012. And I will never tire of saying that. The Olympic spirit is about finding the best in ourselves. London 2012 will be that and more. And he's this crazy CGI, I don't know what you want to call it, action film on how they're going to build the Olympic 2012 stadium. Mm -hmm. And um, given what Ian had spoke about with aliens and Independence Day style spaceships and stuff, this has got it all in it. Basically, uh, within 40 seconds of this video, there's four chimneys that stand like an 1111, but mm -hmm. then it moves into the most significant symbology you could ever see with like... You know, an Independence Day style mothership for a roof, little UFOs flying all around the London <laughs> Eye, and then right. it ends up with robotic street walkers in the middle of London stomping around the place, all hmm. like towards the Olympic Stadium. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty weird to watch it, and it's it's on my blog and it's on YouTube as well. If you just yeah. do a search for the stadium design video, <laughs> you can see for yourself that there's there's definitely symbology in there, like hmm. you know whether you like it or not. <laughs> um, so I, this got me thinking. I was like. Uh, where does this go? Does this mean that the, there is a significant event looming for the Olympics? And mm -hmm. I started thinking to myself, well, you know, if they're about to do this now, they've done this before. Um, you know, they've used the Olympics for such events before. Yeah. Which um, led me into looking into 1972 Olympics in Munich. Mm -hmm. Now, funnily enough, these were the, very, the world's first stage for global terrorism. You know, the very first global, like, you know, declared as global terrorism, the first act. Yeah. It was in the 1972 Munich Olympics. Indeed, yeah. And on these Olympics, there were 11 Israelis killed, so we've got the number 11 there, mm. and they were killed by a group called Black September, <laughs> which is obviously the ninth month. So yeah. it's obviously a 9-11 you've got there. Yeah. And that particular Olympics um, were host to 121 countries, which is 11 times 11. Mm. So you've got a significant event there with first like global stage for terrorism, as it is. Yeah. And then, you know, moving on, I started thinking, well, you know, the year 1984, there's obviously Olympics in that year, mm. and um, it's synonymous with the George Orwell book of Big Brother and, you know, a completely, you know, oppressive state, if you like, a New mm -hmm. World Order kind of background. Yeah. And um, I did, I, 
I'd briefly remembered hearing things about a, a closing ceremony in the 1984 Olympics and uh, did some rooting around on the internet and obviously came across a video. In the 1984 Olympics, which were held in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. they closed the ceremony and the audience didn't even expect this because most of the audience expect, like, thought it was real at the time. It closed with a UFO flying over the Olympic Stadium, kind of communicating with the audience in a close encounter with you know, the third kind oh, style. The UFO eventually like closes down and lands in the center of the stadium. The glow from behind the arena. The spaceship has actually landed. Will they send a messenger? The full moon over Los Angeles. That's the real one. At which point there's a load of smoke, and then this alien gets out and tells the audience that he likes what he sees there. Thinks we have a visitor. The alien himself. That is no one on stilts. That is a man seven feet eight inches tall. So you've got this really strange thing out of the middle of nowhere. No one was expecting it. And I don't know how you'd ever connect Olympics with this UFO event in the first place. Yeah, yeah. But basically, obviously, 1984, symbolic year, UFO landed. Hmm. So you start thinking, stuff going on, yeah. not sure, what, I can't really put my finger on things. And at this point, I'd uh, decided to move away from the Olympics for a bit because I felt that, <clears throat> you know, I wasn't going to find much more for the time being. Mm. And uh, it got me involved in looking at symbols as such and uh, general symbolism and corporate logos. And um, and um, I started off with, obviously, the, the all-seeing eye on the dollar bill. Yeah. And um, if you notice with the all-seeing eye on the dollar bill, on the particular side that it's on, it's the only, it's the only note that it appears on in America, mm. and there's four ones on it, and they ring out 1111, either side of the dollar bill. Indeed, yeah. You've hmm. got the same thing again. And I was looking at that and uh, basically started comparing it to other, you know, American uh, institutions, looking it through, you know, the FBI logo, the CIA logo, all, every single one of them, you can essentially kind of draw out the pyramid without the capstone yeah. and have an eye in the center. You know, the same, the same geometrics work in a lot of the, you know, the official like, institutions of America. Yeah. And... Uh, I wanted to get to the source of where this was, and everyone, like you know, generally a misinterpretation is that America was the foundation of all of this. You know, in 1776, um, and you know, I mean, for a while I thought America was the start of all of this new world order stuff. I didn't, didn't think any further than that. My consciousness wouldn't allow it. Yeah. But um, eventually, I came to me, you know, Britain. Britain, obviously, we British. The British founded America. Yeah. Or, on in a Western kind of empire that is like sense, but um, looked at the uh, British coat of arms, and if you pick up the British coat of arms, again you'll notice that you've got a pyramid, and where the all seeing eye is, you've got a crown. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's the same thing. You can draw the same geometrics over it, and you've got smack bang the same sim symbols coming at you. Hmm. So I was like, right, well, what's going on here? Then? <laughs> this is obviously a lot more. Uh, you know, ingrained in the human civilization, like more than I thought, anyhow. Indeed. Which point, which point, you then start moving to uh, the famous corporate symbols of McDonald's and Schweppes and Starbucks. These uh, amazing, like corporations that are, you'll find them in all the symbolic places of the world. Like when I've been to Rome, you've got a McDonald's opposite the Pantheon and the Egyptian obelisk. <laughs> and then if you go to the Sphinx in Cairo, and you've got a KFC, and you've got a McDonald's right outside the entranceway. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, literally everywhere you go, you can no doubt find one of these kind of food venues or yeah, whatever. The pests. You know, right next to some of these symbolic structures. Yeah. And so, with, for instance, explain the, uh, the McDonald's logo. You've got nine letters in the word McDonald's. And I decided to split that up into pyramid numerology. So you've got one, two, three, two, one. Split the word up. Do you know what I mean? Into a step kind of structure. And uh, I think you have uh, this on your blog, isn't that right? So people that yeah. are tuning in can uh, sh take a look at that. You can take a look at it on my blog, but basically to spell it out, basically the two, it, you can form a, a pyramid-like word out of it in yeah. which uh, the cornerstones and the top part of the pyramid minus the capstone spell the word mason. Yeah. Um, and essentially what the, the pyramid is showing is that the two arches of Freemasonry, or the golden arches, or whatever you want to call them, um, emanate from the center of the pyramid and preside all the way onto the outside of the pyramid. 
Mm. So essentially, you've got this um, event that seems to preside over the pyramid. Um, mm. And then, same thing goes with the Schweppes logo. I mean, this, I had a real good 11-11 moment with this because it happened in a uh, happened in a glass of uh, Schweppes tonic water when the <laughs> ice cubes started ringing at me. Right. And I thought that was, uh, <laughs> it was pretty mental, but it cool. was in, insinuating something was happening. Nice. And nice. I look, looked on the bottle, and the year 1783. Um, on, obviously, on the all-seeing eye, and the, the date 1776. Mm -hmm. 